Hi class, welcome to lesson 61. In this lesson, you will learn to determine if a compound is saturated or unsaturated, differentiate between the structural formulas of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and construct the structural formulas of straight chain alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Make sure you take good notes. You can use guided notes or take your own, but let's go. Now, we've used the word saturated before when we were describing solutions on reference table J, and we can recall that saturated solutions were at equilibrium because they had the maximum amount of dissolved solute. That means that their rate of dissolving equaled the rate of recrystallization. In organic compounds, the word saturated still means maximum, but it's for a slightly different reason. So saturated bonds require single bonds between the carbons, because when you have single bonds between the carbons, you have the maximum amount of hydrogen possible. So when we look at reference table Q and you examine the general formula, you can see that alkanes have the most hydrogens per carbon than any other hydrocarbon series. Now, unsaturated hydrocarbons will contain a double or triple bond between the carbons. Hydrogen can only make one bond, so hydrogen can never have a double or triple bond. But the double or triple bond between the carbons means that there is less than the maximum amount of hydrogens attached. So both alkenes and alkynes are considered unsaturated. There are three types of formulas that we are going to look at when describing organic compounds. The first formula is the molecular formula. For a hydrocarbon formula, we usually write the carbon and then the hydrogen and it just shows the number of each element that is in the compound. So here in this formula, we have two carbons and six hydrogens. The structural formula is exactly as it sounds. It shows how all of the pieces are connected in the structure. In organic compounds, we always want to begin by bonding the carbons to each other and then we'll fill in with the hydrogens. And the condensed formula shows what is attached to each carbon. Um, so in this case, each carbon has three hydrogens attached to it. So again, if we begin with methane. Here we have methane, the prefix meth tells us that we are going to have one carbon. Now the suffix ane tells us we are going to have an alkane. The general formula according to reference table Q for an alkane is C to the N H to the 2N plus 2. So when we substitute here, if I only have one carbon, I'm going to need four hydrogens. We're going to always start by drawing the carbons. In this case, there's only one carbon. Carbon, in order to obtain a stable, low energy, noble gas, valence electron configuration, always makes four bonds. We'll attach a hydrogen at each bond. So the condensed formula for methane shows what's attached to our one carbon. So you can see that our condensed formula is simply going to be CH4. So let's work together and we'll look at a sample of ethane. Now let's look at ethane. The prefix eth tells us that there will be two carbons. The suffix ane tells us that we are going to have an alkane whose general formula, again, is this. So when we substitute here, I have two times two carbons, or I have six 
hydrogens. Now drawing the structural formula is a little more involved here. You always want to begin with the carbon and attach all your carbons together. So I'm going to start with one carbon and attach it to my second carbon. Now carbon always makes four bonds. So it is helpful to just look at one carbon at a time. This carbon has one bond. I'm going to add bonds as I add hydrogens. And then I'll repeat for the next carbon. To draw the structural formula, it can be helpful if you draw a line between each carbon-carbon bond like this. The condensed formula just shows which is attached to each carbon. So this carbon has three hydrogens attached to it, and this carbon also has three hydrogens attached to it. So by now you should be able to identify a structural formula of an alkane and draw the structural formula of an alkane. So drawing the structural formula of alkenes works the same way as alkanes. Carbon, so we want to attach them together and we want to make sure every carbon has four bonds. But when we have a double bond present, we're going to have to describe where that double bond should be present. So we'll use a number to do that. And we always start numbering our carbon chain so that the special bond, in this case the double bond, has the lowest possible um, number attached to it. And we'll do an example so you can see. So let's start with ethene. F tells us that we're going to have two carbons in the molecular formula. Ene means we're going to use the alkene general formula. So since I have two carbons, I'm going to need four hydrogens. To draw the structure, you always begin by connecting the carbons together. But the suffix ene tells us there is one double bond between carbons. And the final step is to add hydrogens. Now carbon has three spaces you could add hydrogens. Below, to the side, or above. It doesn't matter where you add them, but I like to keep my structure neat on a XY coordinate plane. So let's add hydrogens. So when I look at this carbon, it already has two bonds. So this carbon needs two more bonds that I'm going to add by adding hydrogens. When I look at this carbon, it also already has two bonds. So it also needs two hydrogens. So notice I drew the structure this way. It could also be drawn with the hydrogens in different positions, but the most important part is that each carbon only has two hydrogen. That leads us to our condensed formula. If I draw a line between the carbon, carbon chain and I see what's attached, this carbon has two hydrogens and this carbon has two hydrogens. Pause the video and try to draw the structure of propene on your own. You can fast forward to the timestamp at the end of the video to check your work. Let's look at one butene. Because Sometimes multiple bonds need to be put in specific locations. Let's look at one butene. So the prefix but tells us that we have four carbons. And ene means we're going to apply the alkene general formula. So we will have eight hydrogens. So to draw the structure, we're going to start with our four carbons and link them together. But the suffix ene tells us there is one double bond. 
and the number one tells us the double bond should extend between the first and the second carbon. After we add in our double bond, we can add the hydrogens so every carbon has four bonds. This carbon needs one hydrogen. This carbon needs two. And this carbon needs three. To draw the condensed formula, draw the lines to mark the sections of each carbon, and then just write what you see. So here we have CH2, CH, CH2, CH3. Let's look at one more example of how we use a number in a alkene structure. Now, 2-butene will be similar, but it's different. Here, we have butene. But tells us we have four carbons, and ene means I'm going to apply the alkene general formula. So, to draw the structural formula, I'm going to draw my four carbons. But then I look at this number 2, which tells me my double bond should extend from the second to the third carbon. Now that I have my carbons together and my multiple bond in, I can add my hydrogen so every carbon has four total bonds. And finally, to draw the condensed formula, we separate each carbon-carbon bond and we write what we see in each section. Now here you can see that we have a repeating unit in the middle, so we can condense our condensed structure if we would like by putting the repeating unit in parentheses and the subscript telling how many times it repeats, in this case two, outside. But notice that because these units are not concatenated, they're, they're not strung together, um, they must be on the outside. So we can't use the parentheses for the terminals, only for things that are repeated in the middle. So by now you should be able to differentiate a formula as that of an alkane, alkene, or alkyne, and you should be able to draw the structure of an alkene. Let's try alkynes. So drawing an alkane is essentially the same thing as an alkene, except for alkynes, of course, have triple bonds instead of double. So let's look at this example of 1-butyne. Alkynes work in a very similar way to alkenes, where the number is the location of the multiple bond. So here we have butyne. Bute tells us that we have four carbons. Ein tells us we should apply the general formula for the alkynes, so we will have two less than double four, or we'll have six hydrogens. To draw the structural formula, always begin by stringing your carbons together. From here, we know we need a triple bond, and the triple bond should be located starting at the first carbon and extending to the second. The final step is to add the hydrogens so that all the carbons have four bonds. This carbon needs one hydrogen. Your second carbon doesn't need any hydrogen. It already has four bonds.
To draw the condensed formula, you're just going to separate each carbon-carbon bond and write what you see. So this is CH, C, CH2, CH3. And 2 butyne. Now we can compare this to 2-butyne. So all butyne have the same general formula. Now, when we string our four carbons together, we know that we need to add a triple bond, but this time our triple bond should extend beginning at the second carbon and going to the third. So this has a different structure, so it's going to have different properties than one butyne. Let's see if we can add in our hydrogens. Now for our condensed formula. So now you should be able to differentiate between the structural formulas of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, and you should be able to construct the structural formula of alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. That concludes lesson number 62. Make sure you complete your homework on Google Classroom. Bring any questions you have to class, and I'll see you soon. Prope tells us that there are three carbons. Ean tells us to apply the alkene general formula. So if there are three carbons, there must be six hydrogens. To draw the structure of propene, we're going to start by linking together our three carbons. The suffix ene tells us that there should be a double bond. There is only going to be one double bond. So I'm going to pick a carbon carbon and I'm going to add one more bond. Now the final step is to add the hydrogens. I know that my structure should have six hydrogens. So as I look at the first carbon, it already has two bonds. So I'm going to add two hydrogens. When I look at the middle carbon, it has three bonds, so it only needs one hydrogen. I can put it on the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter, it means the same thing. And in my final carbon, you can see it has one bond, meaning it needs three hydrogens. So I wanna check my work and make sure I have six hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the structural formula of propene. To write the condensed formula, I like to draw my lines between each carbon-carbon bond, and then I can just write what I have. So in this section, I have one carbon and two hydrogens. In this section, I have a carbon and a hydrogen. And in this section, I have a carbon and three hydrogens.